History is basically a bunch of stories put together to give us an idea of past events. Whether they are true or not, correct or incorrect, all depends on the teller of the story. And while these stories are true in most cases, there are cases where the stories are lacking some piece of it. Welcome back to the Told You Another Story channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the story of the very first discoverer of North America. We have all heard a historical recollection of how America was discovered. And while some of us don't remember it so much, those that do will probably have a set story in their heads. What if the story was a bit off, and things weren't exactly as you have always thought they were? Well, keep watching to find out more. For those of you who remember what you were taught in history class, it is believed that Christopher Columbus discovered America. We have held on to the fact for many years. However, as time goes by, we've noticed some flaws in that story. For example, when Christopher Columbus got there, America wasn't exactly empty, which means he didn't exactly discover it. But that aside, it turns out that he wasn't even the first European to reach America in the first place. While you deal with your shock, the question that comes to mind is, who is the person who beat Christopher Columbus to America? The simplest answer to that question would be a man named Leif Erikson. But there is more to that story than that. Leif comes from a long line of Norse explorers. His father, Eric the Red, was the Norse explorer credited for the discovery of the first settlement in Greenland, and his distant relative, Nadod, who was credited with discovering Iceland. Coming from a family like this, Leif ended up becoming a Norse explorer and going on his journey of discovery. His family story was a bit unusual compared to most people. His grandfather, Thorvald Asvaldsson, suffered banishment from Norway for committing manslaughter and went into exile in Iceland along with his young son and Leif's dad, Eric. Just like his father, Eric the Red also got banished from Iceland and traveled further west to an unknown area he called Greenland where he founded the first permanent settlement in 986. When Leif grew up, he decided to set off on his own journey, hoping to discover some new land. That is where Vinland comes in. And no, I'm not referring to the Japanese anime. Vinland was an area of coastal North America explored by Vikings, but not just any Viking, Leif Erikson himself. The story of Leif's discovery of Vinland is often told in two accounts one from the saga of Eric the Red, and the other from the saga of the Greenlanders. Both sagas tell the story a little differently, so we will look at each one separately. The saga of Eric the Red offers an account of Leif's discovery of North America, or Vinland as it was called. And according to the saga, Leif's discovery of North America was purely by mistake. According to the saga, Leif was on a journey from Norway to Greenland after visiting his overlord, King Olaf Tryggvason who commissioned him to spread Christianity in the colony when his ship was blown off course. When Leif came across the storm that forced him off course, he was accompanied by a priest and had been on a journey to introduce Christianity to the people who lived in Greenland at the time. After the ship had made its way to the unknown shore, thanks to the storm, the crew disembarked and explored the area. They discovered wild grapes, self-sown wheat, and maple trees as they explored. This discovery was a good thing for them, and with these new products in hand, they decided to continue their journey. The crew members loaded their ship with grapes or currants, wheat and timber samples, and sailed east to Greenland. On the way, Leif rescued the survivors from a wrecked ship, gaining a reputation for good luck, and his religious mission ended up being a swift success. While the story had Leif Erikson credited as the discoverer of Vinland, and also stated that Leif never returned to Vinland after that unplanned expedition. Instead, Thorstein, Leif's brother, led an expedition to the new land the next spring, but sailed off course and spent the entire sailing the Atlantic Sea. Thorstein spent the winter as a guest at a farm in Greenland with his wife, Gudrid, but unfortunately he died of disease. Gudrid got married the next winter to a visiting Icelander called Thorfinn Karlsefni, who agreed to go on a major expedition to this new land along with his business partner, Snorri Thorbrandsson, taking livestock with them. Another pair of visiting Icelanders called Jarni Grimolsson and Thorhall Gamlason also contributed ships for this expedition, along with Leif's siblings Thorvald and Fadis, with her husband Thorvard. Their journey had them sailing past landscapes of flat stones called Helluland and forests called Markland. They rounded a cape where they came across the kneel of a boat. 
then kept sailing past some very long beaches before they disembarked and sent out two runners to explore inland. Three days passed and the two runners returned with grapes or currants and wheat samples. Sailing a little further, the expedition landed at an inlet beside an area of strong currents, with an island just offshore, and they made their temporary settlement here. At this point, the discovery of North America was already a given, and while they sailed round the shore for a while, they did end up moving inland over time. The other account from the saga of the Greenlanders is a bit different from this one. For one, Leif didn't discover Vinland or North America accidentally, as he did the saga of Eric the Red. Another difference is that he wasn't the first Norse explorer to reach North America, even by mistake. In the saga of the Greenlanders, Jarni Herlofsson was regarded as the first man to discover North America. He and his crew were sailing from Iceland to Greenland and were blown off course, missing the southern tip of Greenland. They came across an unknown coast, and since they believed it to be somewhere that wasn't Greenland, they decided not to disembark, but instead sailed back east, ultimately making it to their original destination, where they told of their discovery. When Bjarni told his overlord about this new land, he was criticized for the long delay in reporting this, and on returning to Greenland, he retold the story of his discovery and inspired Leif Erikson to organize an expedition. Leif approached Bjarni, bought his ship, assembled a crew of 35 men, and started an expedition towards the land Bjarni had described. This expedition retraced in reverse the course Bjarni had followed, past a land of flat stones called Heluland and a land of forests called Markland. After continuing the expedition for another two days across the open sea, they found a headland with an island just off the shore, with a nearby pool accessible to ships at high tide in an area where the sea was shallow with sandbanks. As the winter season got closer, Leif decided to settle there and sent out parties to explore the country. During one of these explorations, an old family servant, Tyrker, went missing and was later found mumbling to himself. He finally explained that he found grapes or currants and Leif then named the land Vinland or Wineland. He and his crew constructed a small settlement there called Leif's Budir or Leif's Boots, by later visitors of Greenland. After staying in Vinland for the winter, Leif returned to Greenland in the spring with a boatload of grapes and timber. On his return journey to Greenland, he rescued a castaway and the crew members on an Icelandic ship, receiving him the nickname Leif the Lucky. While he never returned to Vinland, there were other explorers from Greenland and Iceland who did. This took place roughly half a millennium before Christopher Columbus ever set foot in North America, and there were archaeological pieces of evidence to support this story. Research carried out in the early 60s by a Norwegian explorer, Helge Ingstad, and his wife, archaeologist Annie Steen Ingstad, discovered a Norse site situated at the northern tip of Newfoundland in Canada. It has been proposed that this site, referred to as Lons or Meadows, is Leif's Budir, or Leif's Boots. As time went by, archaeological evidence later suggested that Vinland may have been the place around the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and that the Lons or Meadows site was a ship repair station and waypoint for voyages there. This evidence doesn't necessarily oppose the identification of Lons or Meadows as Leif's Budir, especially since the two sagas describe Vinland as a wider region with several settlements. I guess there's more to history than the stories we have heard for so long after all. Thank you for watching this video, hit us up in the comments section and give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.